um, you know, a lot of the times, right, like you, you guys are the, the balancing of the scale, trying to make sure that things are fair, trying to do the right thing, trying to, you know, um, balance out that karmic scale so that both parties always contribute an equal amount, okay? And um, I'm reminded of the, um, the situation where it's, some, it's a picture that I saw on social media. It's about, you know, being fair and also being equitable. And um, you have like a short man. He's standing on two crates and he can barely still, because he's so short, he, even though he's standing on two crates, he can't look over the fence and, and see the soccer match. Whereas you have another really tall man, and he's also given the same amount of crates to stand on. So he has two crates. And so he's towering over this fence, and he's looking at the soccer match. Whereas the shorter man, you know, they're both given two crates. So yes, it is fair, right? It's equitable because they're getting the same amount of crates. But one person is born kind of well endowed. You know, they're tall, and they're able to look over that fence. Whereas other people are not as fortunate and they're born a lot shorter, they're disadvantaged. And that's just, you know, a simple analogy. But what I feel is that that message is what I'm seeing in the spread here. Where it's like fairness needs to be also context specific. Not everything in life needs to be calibrated, nickel and dime and, and balanced out and, you know, uh, equal give and take. When one partner is kind of um, low, at a low point in their life, we have to step up. If we love them, if we want the relationship to survive, we need to step up. And, you know, who knows how long they're going to be down for. But we need to do the right thing because we love the person and because we cherish the relationship. And likewise, when you're down in the dumps, they're going to have to step up too. And they might not know how long it's going to be. And it's these moments where the, the balancing uh, scale, when, when the scales are off or the scales are off kilter, that's when we really understand and truly see how the other person treats us. And that's what really dictates, you know, whether or not they really love us. So... In relationship, maintaining the niceties, maintaining the balancing act, maintaining the, the scales of equilibrium, not to rock the boat, not to, you know, upset the apple cart or like walking around on eggshells around another person. All of these things are kind of, um, they're, they're just the veneer. They're just like the, um, the, the superficial things that we do to maintain a very balanced relationship but the tipping point the the uh, the sore spots it's when the trouble begins is when people are put under pressure that's when we know what people are all about and that's when we or even you Libras know what you're all about are you willing to rough it out or do you run at the first sign of trouble so I feel like this is the week where you have to kind of examine the deeper motives, okay, and your deeper intentions. And this is the week where you're going to have to kind of um, look at yourself in a way that you might not have had the courage to do before. And I feel like a lot of the courage is, uh, stems from the fact that you want to maintain the peace. You're not a conflictual type of a person, but it's when you're put under pressure, opposition, that's when you really know who you are. So I feel like I'm inclined to say, do you really know who you are? Do you really know who you're dealing with? Do you really know who your partner is? Do you know what they're capable of? Do you know and understand the people around you who's really there for you? When the going gets rough, when you're put under pressure, who is able to come to your defense? Who is able to stick with you through thick and thin? These are the things that you need to, or these are the things and the people that you need to tr uh, treasure and to value. The rest of it is just the veneer. It's just the facade. It's just the social niceties, the, the airs that people put on. But at the end of the day, 
it's like, you know, it, it's all fake pretty much. Okay. So that is what I'm seeing across both of these spreads. And I feel like it's coming out here in the um, spiritual advice a lot more than the love reading. Thank God. But I feel like these are things that we're going to have to examine, not only for this week, because I feel like the energy is going to permeate all throughout, all throughout uh, your birthday time. And, you know, birthday time is when we get a lot of contact, a lot of invites, a lot of communication from other people. So who's really reaching out? Who's really there? Who really remembers? I feel like that's going to be a test of how much you mean to them. And that's going to be a test of you know, who's, uh, who really values you and who really is valuable to you. Okay. So let's talk about your relationship sector first. Um, I feel like you're dealing with somebody who's showing you a different side of yourself. Okay. So like, um, it's not going to be as balanced as you hoped. Okay. Because this person is, um, injecting a grander vision into the picture this person is not just about hey it's me and you happily ever after this person has dreams and aspirations that are a lot bigger than you or them and i also feel like they're willing to forego a relationship if it doesn't meet their ideals and then also they're willing to forego a relationship if life is calling and the person you're dealing with here, I have here the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords, um, this fell out for, I believe, Taurus. So if you have Taurus in your chart, if you have, if you're dealing with a Taurus, you might want to, you know, uh, take a look at this, okay? If you're dealing with a Taurus, if you have Taurus, Moon, Sun, or Rising in your own chart, um, their reading might be um, pertinent as well. It might help you understand things from another person's perspective. Uh, you don't have trouble doing that, but I feel like it might be meaningful. Anyways, we have here an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra, such as yourself. However, um, I mentioned before, I feel like you guys, especially the um, the Libra moons, you guys love, love, love your pinks. And I have this card that represents you. I might actually talk about this first so that you can see the, the contrast. So this is your energy, the Eight of Cups. This is walking away from a situation that is not balanced, a situation that you've invested a lot of time, resources, energy into, a lot of work into as well. And at this point, you're, you're tired. Emotionally, you're overtaxed. And you feel like, oh my gosh, I've wasted so much time. It's, really, it's been really hard for you to disengage, mainly because you're like, I've invested a lot of time and uh, I'm not going to be able to recoup my loss and so you might have been hesitant about walking away in the past, but now you're willing to walk away. You're willing to take a new path, mainly because it's not emotionally nurturing you anymore. And it felt very heavy and it has felt very icy and cold for a really long time. So, you know, you, you put on the veneer that like everything is rosy, right? That, that, that pink, everything is rosy. Everything is peachy. However, internally in your hearts of hearts, I don't feel like you can... Uh, deny the fact that your heart is not in it anymore it's it's taxing and it's not liberating and it's unbalanced and um it's not reciprocal and so many of you have chosen to walk away from a situation or emotionally you have walked out of a situation and i feel like you're looking towards somebody else here okay Somebody is bringing something into your life. They're showing you a different perspective. And I feel like you might still be in this other relationship that you, you can't, where you can't really recoup your loss or you can't really move away. There might be children. And you might have also wondered, like, you know, I can't leave because, you know, there might not be other people, other suitors, other opportunities for me until this person comes into the picture. And this person is everything that you've wanted. They're blue. You're very pink. So I feel like there might be gender role reversal. Okay. And that's just the stereotypical, you know, color coding that I'm using. But I, I do feel there's an element here. This is a female energy. 
and yet her demeanor is very, very strategic, very icy. So she's not a warm, cuddly type of a person. However, she's very intelligent. So it could be a male or a female, but their energy is that they're not, you know, typically warm and cuddly and welcoming and things like that. However, this person is very um, highly activated on the crown chakra. They have a lot of insights, a lot of wisdom. They can see through people. They can see through situations. They can bring a lot of clarity in a situation where there is none. And I feel like you find them very, very attractive. And one of the ways in which um, Libra and Torian people find other people attractive is in the symmetry. The way they dress, whether or not their um, their clothes like are complementary colors, the way their um, their facial features are, whether or not they're um, they have dimples or they have like a gentle, a kind face. So I feel like you guys are really um, are are suckers for like people with a pretty face. Okay, like um, we're talking like classical beauty, like um, somebody with dimples, somebody with long eyelashes, somebody with expressive eyes, somebody with features that make them feel like very gentle very um like harmless okay like big eyes and you know rosy cheeks and plump lips and you know things that make people feel like wow this person is like a doll they won't really hurt a fly so you find this person really attractive and i feel like that's the first thing that drew you in you found them very very attractive very physically aesthetically pleasing to look at and um when you got to know them you might find this aloofness, this icy demeanor about them quite fascinating, mainly because it's not emotionally draining on you, mainly because they don't demand a lot of from you. And so many of you might be in one relationship where you're like looking for a way out and you've been thinking about it for quite some time, but you stuck around. And I feel like this person is like a breath of fresh air into your life and you're kind of starstruck. But you're just like, maybe I can have both, you know, like I see this element about weighing out the pros and cons. And at the end of the day, you've concluded, maybe I don't have to forego one to have the other. Maybe I can do both because this person doesn't seem like they're emotionally needy. So I can put my emotional needs here and just, you know, have this person in whatever way I can, because they're not going to going to make demands of me. And I feel like at first it was like that. However, you became attached to the other person. They're like this, very aloof. They can take care of themselves. They're independent. They don't really need another person. But I feel like what you started developing was the two of cups. This is a friendship. This is like a very deep spiritual bond between you and another person. This is like two people who are very like-minded. The communication flows really, really well between the two people. It's uh, the foundation of friendship, and it allowed the two of you to approach one another in a very honest, in a very like uh, unguarded type of a manner. And I feel like you have developed feelings for this person. Um, you didn't think it was going to happen like that. You you thought you know you could handle the disconnection, I guess. But then the other person draws you in, and then you end up at this two of cups phase where you feel like. This person is my kindred soul. They really, really, really get me. And I feel like the trouble is right now, this is a really beautiful card, but I feel like the person that you're dealing with, you might not be physically intimate with them. There might be an emotional affair. There might be, you know, if you're in another relationship, there might be an emotional affair. I don't see a lot of things here that indicate, well, I definitely see attraction. Um, and I feel like a very strong soul connection and a spiritual connection. I don't see like, you know, that, that sexual attraction, the, I can't live without you type of attraction, like that carnal desire, because I feel like nothing has been consummated yet. There is an emotional connection. There's an emotional affair. If you're in another relationship, there's a deep emotional bond. But where the person is, is that they're very moral. They will not stray from their morality, okay? So, like, 
I feel like it's somebody that's, um, you know, kind of like no sex before marriage. Okay, so it could play out in that way. Or I won't, I can't be with you if you're married to somebody else. Or I can't be with someone I don't love. Or they could just be like, um, they could be waiting as well for you to finish up things from your end, whatever that means, before they can get involved with you. But if they want to get involved with you, I feel like it's going to have to be all or nothing because this person wouldn't want any less. They want all of you or none of you. Okay, so that's where you're at with this person right here. And this person, they're linked up with the star and the world. So you're dealing with someone who might be very, very popular. They might have uh, fame and some type of, um, they might have fame, they might have, uh, they might be a world traveler, there might be an element of um, people coming from different countries, somebody that travels a lot or somebody that is, that belongs to a different world. Like they're just, you know, culturally different from you. And the star in the world basically means they are waiting on a higher calling. They're waiting on for their life to begin. They're waiting for opportunities to travel. They're waiting for opportunities to, to kind of um, move away, pursue their life or allow their life to start. So I feel like at a moment's notice, they're going to be on their way out. They're going to be seeking other opportunities. So there's somebody here that you definitely have a very strong connection with, but it seems like you're tied up in something else. You're not able to give them whatever it is that they want or whatever it is that you want from them to solidify a really strong relationship. And the, the feelings are definitely mutual, you know, with this two of cups. It's a soulmate connection. It's a very strong spiritual bond. Um, but I feel like if you don't if you don't recognize it for what it is it's going to slip away and soulmate connections they come in in um they're 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 not rare per se but i feel like there's a time and a place for it and the the soulmate connection can also run its course too there's a time and a place for that as well so if you're not quick on the uptake and recognize this situation for its rarity and for, you know, how powerful it is, I feel like it's going to slip you by because the other person, they're going to be drifting away, okay? This is the escape here. Things coming to a culmination, things coming, it's like coming full circle and coming to an end, closing out of a cycle, mainly because we have have healed up from the past. For others of you, it could be, you know, just um, the fact that you're with a new person now that really gets you, that you feel is your kindred soul and you're very, very happy. The person has helped you done a lot of healing on yourself. And I feel like the cycle of you being feeling, we have here the eight of cups and the two of cups and all together it adds up to 10, which is the completion stage. You have somebody, you've been feeling empty and, and taken for granted for a really long time. And then you meet this person who's like a kindred soul. They're fair. They are just. They want to do the right thing. And I feel like it's really refreshing when we meet somebody who has the same values as us. All right. And so they're completing you and they're going to help you kind of like continue that next phase of your journey. So. If you didn't believe in, you know, morality, if you didn't believe that people were selfless, that people are, are, are incapable of, you know, doing the right thing, I feel like you're meeting somebody, you might have met somebody already, or for this week at least, you're meeting somebody that has these high ideals and aspirations and dreams and goals and sense of morality and that moral compass and also the same values that you espouse. And as a result of it, it's going to feel like, wow, this person gets me. This is what I've been missing all along. And it took this person to come into the picture for me to believe in it again and for me to feel like I'm normal. I'm not the weird one um, just because everyone around me, you know, lost faith in it. So I feel like someone is giving you a lot of inspiration and they're kind of like um, kind of like that star in a very dark night. You know, you're going through a period of a lot of immense self-doubt. 
Am I in the right place? Am I where I'm meant to be? Am I following the right path? Am I doing the right thing? And then this person is showing you, yes, you're on the right path. Yes, you're doing the right thing because I believe in the same things. So you're meeting a very strong soulmate. And it's a beautiful relationship. Recognize it for what it is and really cherish it, okay? And 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 proactively go after it because I don't feel like they're going to stay around. If you're not making your intentions known, you know, they might not linger around forever. And then when you decide to do it, Libras, it might be too late because you tend to straddle the fence and, you know, you don't, you're not as decisive as other signs, okay? Um, other areas of your life, um, once again, I feel that energy, the veneer, okay, keeping scores and things like that. So I have this element here. This is a workplace attraction. I have the seven of pentacles. This is like two people working towards a common goal, a common purpose. And usually I think of this as, you know, I'm staying a little bit extra at work, mainly because there is an office attraction or something that is um, hidden. Okay, not so much like a clandestine affair that would be more the Seven of Swords, but more like I really admire and appreciate this person. I want to get to know them better. Um, but we have like work that needs to be done. But there's that, you know, every once in a while they cross my path. There's that attraction. So I definitely see you feeling this for somebody and it might make the work environment a lot more dynamic, a lot more fun. Um, I also feel like there might be interference in the work environment as well. This is a card about training, consulting, and too many people involved in a situation, too many cooks in the kitchen. Everyone is offering their two cents, unsolicited nonetheless, and everyone feels like they're an expert in their field, so they're coming together to kind of offer you know, their advice, offer their take, and it can create a lot of confusion. And I feel like that's what it's doing here. With We end up here with the Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles is a situation where we feel kind of left out. We feel a little bit hidden and isolated. And despite all of these options, all of these people coming in telling us what we should do, it's really hard for us to listen to our inner voice and allow... It's like these, these inputs from these other people is drowning out your intuition. So you should really listen to your intuition and, and figure out what you need to do, okay? So... That's one area that I feel, you know, there's workplace attraction. There's also like workplace confusion and, and interference and too many people telling you what to do. And you want to, of course, appease everybody. But I feel like you're at a point where you can no longer do that. You're at a point where you need to kind of step out of your shell and grow up. And I want to say like almost grow a backbone. And do what it is that you're divinely, intuitively guided to do rather than being afraid to upset people by not taking their advice, even if what they're offering you is not appropriate for what you're dealing with, okay? Um, for those of you who are feeling a little bit um, down and out, if you have recently, I see a divorce situation here as well. We have the Justice card as well as the Four of Wands. This is like um, paying alimony, paying child support, uh, ending a relationship, having to deal with the legal aftermath of a failed relationship. If you are dealing with that as well, I feel like financially things might be halved, okay? So financially, if you have had a lot of financial um, blessings, so if, if you're like, you know, if you were married and there were two uh, incomes, now we're going in half. And I feel like you're going to start to feel the financial pinched, okay? And then if you've had to, you know, take care of the kids or the wife or the husband or whatever the situation is, there's now child support and alimony that's going to have to be had and there's going to be that financial pinch as well. So I feel like for some of you, the financial um, picture is not looking too great. And I also feel as if, I feel like for those of you who are dealing with, you know, divorces and separation and child support and alimony, you have to kind of go to court and sort out like um, either agree to like a, um, to like redraw or renew or renegotiate your alimony or child support payments. And then for others of you, 
I feel like you're doing really well in at work. You might be in the legal profession. You might have met somebody that you've married to in the legal profession. You might now be meeting somebody in the legal profession and you guys really hit it off. And I feel like, you know, it's it's a really great career for you to stay in. You're consulting or other people are consulting you. And so you're doing a lot of training in that arena. But I definitely feel like there is this sense of meeting somebody that you really, really uh, love on a soul level. You recognize each other. It's like upon the first time that you meet, you, you understand this sense of your soul recognizes one another. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that for you, uh, Libras.